So in this talk, I'm going to, to build upon the conceptual definition of limit to define various limits for functions of one variable where either the domain or the range point is going to infinity or minus infinity. So here I have the review of the definition. You should watch that video, Conceptual Definition of Limits. And this is just a quick review. It says limit x approaches c of fx is l if for every neighborhood of l, there's a neighborhood of c such that for every x not equal to c in the neighborhood of c, the image of that lies in the neighborhood of l. Okay? Good? Okay. So now the question is, is as usual, how do you actually define the concept of neighborhood? So, so the general idea has something to do with, with advanced concepts in topology and analysis. Now we don't actually want to do the uh, general thing. By the way, I abbreviate neighborhood as NBHT just to save space, but it's the usual neighborhood, which you neighborhood meaning things which are close by. So it it it, it has that sense. So for functions of one variable or in the one variable setting, these are the concepts, these are the interpretations you need to be familiar with. So for a finite point, see, I just mean like anything other than plus infinity minus. So that's an actual real number. The neighborhoods we are concerned about are open intervals centered at C. Centered at C, right? T to the left, T to the right. Okay. I mean, the letter T isn't important. We'll use the other letters like delta and epsilon, but it's just interval centered at C. For plus infinity, the neighborhoods we use, now we cannot take intervals centered at infinity because infinity is already to one extreme. So the neighborhoods we take are open intervals from a finite point to infinity. So these are the neighborhoods we'll use. And for negative infinity, we'll use neighborhoods of the form negative infinity to a finite point. So this A here is a parameter we can change to decide what the neighborhood is. And just like the T here is a parameter we use to decide what the neighborhood is. Okay, so with this general understanding, let's work out some definitions. So what is, suppose, so by the way, when I, when I just write C and L, unless I otherwise specify, I mean finite number. So what is this definition? This is the usual definition, right? So, how, but how would you interpret it in terms of, so let me bring this out again. I have to specify a L neighborhood. Right. I need to specify a neighborhood of L. How do I specify a neighborhood of L? What do I need to specify? I need to specify the radius, right? Now, L is a finite point. So, I need to specify some radius for that. And the usual convention is to use epsilon. So, this reads as... This is the usual definition you've seen, but now we're just interpreting it. So when I specify this epsilon, what am I implicitly trying to specify? A neighborhood of... The neighborhood of L. Okay? And epsilon is just the radius of the neighborhood. Now I need to... What do I need to do now? I need to... I need to specify a neighborhood of... C. C. Now, can I use the same letter for the neighborhood of C? No, because the, the radius of that could be different. So I'll use another letter, and the convention is to use delta. So this is implicitly, so this one is implicitly specifying the interval L minus epsilon, L plus epsilon. And this one is implicitly specifying the interval C minus delta to C plus delta. Such that for, I'll move down. Is it, is it okay to write here or is it okay to get Yes, you can. Okay. For every... x not equal to c. So we want x not equal to c, which is in the c neighborhood. Here. Which means you want x from c minus delta to c minus c plus delta, excluding c. Is that down? Okay. Which is also sometimes written as 0 less than absolute value x minus c less than delta. We have, what do we have? 
we have that fx is in the neighborhood of L. What's neighborhood of L? L minus epsilon to L plus epsilon. So we get fx is which you can also write as absolute value fx minus L less than epsilon. Okay. So I gave the radius of, uh, so both of them were finite points. For each one, I therefore had to pick a finite positive radius. I use the letter epsilon for, for this and the letter delta for this. But I could just use any two letters as long as I kept consistent. Okay. So, so what's another question one can have? So limit x approaches c fx is minus infinity. So what, what we want? We want to first specify a neighborhood of L, except now L is not L, it's minus infinity. So how do you specify a neighborhood of minus infinity? Uh, as a written there. Written there. So you need to specify the value A, right? Mm -hmm. I'll just use the letter A. So for every A. Greater than zero. Well, it doesn't have to be greater than zero. Oh. So right? for every, every A. Any a and R is just like, and thinks it could be just be anything. Okay, the greater than zero happens in the only in this when you specify the radius, that because the radius has to be positive. But in these two cases, we don't have any specification of greater or less, uh, at least by default. Okay. We don't. Okay. Now, now what do we need to do? We need to specify a neighborhood of C, which we can use the letter delta. So we get the rest. This this part we can copy down from the other definition. So x is in the delta neighborhood of C, but excluding the point C itself, which you can write as 0 less than x minus C less than delta. What do we have? We want fx to be in the neighborhood of minus infinity. Now, what neighborhood of minus infinity did we pick? This one. So what does it mean to say fx is in this neighborhood? Well, you should just write this down fx is in minus infinity to a. What does that effectively mean? fx is, what's another saying that? fx is? Is in? Less than, greater than, like that. So fx is less than? Less than, no. It's between negative infinity and a. So it, what does that mean? It's, it is? Less than a. Less than a. Right? That's just another way of saying the same thing. Okay. So good, we have this. So, so actually, so you can, can A be positive infinity? No, A is a real number, so that means you're not allowing positive infinity. But actually, if it were if A were positive infinity, then it would be even easier, right? I mean, then like it would it would obviously be true. So the the point is sort of so if you if you think about this again in terms of the prover skeptic game, which if you've seen that video or you know about that concept, this will make sense. Otherwise, ignore. But if you've seen the idea of prover and skeptic game. Then, then this for every parts are the ones chosen by the skeptic, right? So for every L neighborhood and for every X not equal to C. So if the skeptic wants to make the game hard for the prover, what should the skeptic do? In this first one, the skeptic should pick a small, small epsilon. epsilon. In the same way, in this game, if the skeptic wants to make the game hard for the prover, what should, what should the skeptic pick? A uh, very, very small A. Small in the sense very negative A. Yeah, the absolute value is large. Absolute value, yeah, but very the more negative the a that the skeptic picks, so the harder it is for the prover to try to capture to try to find an interval in which, uh, in which the fun of for x for which the function values are consistently less than a. Okay, so 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 if 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 this thing works for a given a thing, then it will also work when the a value becomes larger so so the the skeptic who wants to be smart should pick as as negative an a as possible 
So allowing AS plus infinity doesn't really change the game. Right? Allowing large values of A is kind of pointless. Okay. So, so there are a bunch of other combinations. I won't do all nine of them. There will there'll be a total of nine because the domain side you could have finite point plus infinity minus infinity. The the target the range side also you could have finite point plus infinity minus. So you have three times three, which is nine possibilities. I won't do all of them. Let me do one more where you have limit where the domain side you're going to infinity. But the target value is finite. So what should this be? Hmm? Mm -hmm. Yeah, what should this be? For every epsilon greater than zero. Yeah, so we have to first begin by specifying a neighborhood of L, a neighborhood on the target side, which in the proof of skeptic game it's a skeptic's move. So the skeptic picks epsilon greater than zero. Okay, now the prover has to specify there exists the, the neighborhood of a. infinity. Okay, there exists an A, a in R. Okay. In R. Such that for every x in the interval A infinity a to infinity. Okay, so now the next step is to pick the x not equal to c in the c neighborhood. Now in this case you don't have to worry about being equal to c because the point is infinity. So you don't have to worry about that. So so it's just x and a infinity, which if you want to write an inequality language, what would it be? X less than or greater than a. Greater than a. Oh. We have f x effect is in the neighborhood of L, which is L minus epsilon, L plus epsilon. So you do, you definitely should not be memorizing all these definitions individually. You should understand the general idea and then you can construct any of these. Okay. Okay. Uh, the, so you can try all the others, so the six others. Now in general you have to be careful, if both of them are infinite, so I'll leave you to think about this, you can check your answers. Suppose I give you something like this. Then you'll have to pick an A for this one and maybe a B for this or something. So you'll have to pick two things but you shouldn't give them the same name, you shouldn't call both of them A. The one you pick for this and the one you pick for this, you should choose different letters and the rest of the construction will work exactly similar to these. Okay, so you can try the, all of them and compare your answers and see how they go.